Now this video can be considered as a mini guide to get started with Cloud API. In this video, we are going to take baby steps and understand how to work with APIs. In the subsequent videos, we are going to tackle more complex topics such as tool use or function calling, computer use, which is in beta, and you can you have already heard and seen the amazing capabilities of Cloud to interact with the computer, then prompt caching and message batch but in this video we are going to look at the basics so i have this folder known as courses here and entropic api fundamentals so this is uh, the folder that we are going to look at and uh, we see that we have six python notebooks and we are going to go through each one of them so the first and foremost is getting started so here what we need to do is we need to create an environment so i've created an environment and i've used that environment here in the python environment so select another kernel python environments i've selected this entropic environment here how to create a new environment it's simple as conda create dash n then you give the name of the uh, environment and specify the python version that you're going to work in it and dash y this is going to create a new environment and once you have that environment you can select that environment from the list of kernels available here now it's uh, okay if i even close this because we are going to be working with the python notebooks so getting started with cloud sdk software development kit now cloud's model are amazing now you can check the version of python that you have by running this python dash dash version on your terminal and once you've done that you can go ahead and install entropic so pip install entropic once you do the installation you would need the api keys you can go to console.entropic.com and then what you can do is i'm going to show you you can go to console entropic.com once you go there you can go to the get api keys here and then you can say create api keys and then you can specify an api keys name for example and then you say add and you just copy this uh, api key and paste it in an environment variable uh, you know file that you made which is a dot env file so you can write entropic api key equal to the api keys now this is a very secure way of putting the .env file because while you are sharing the file you can just rename this uh, as .env.example remove the api keys here and ask the user uh, to enter their own api keys here if you however decided to integrate it in the main code itself then there might be chances of leaking uh, and you forgotting uh, the removing of the api keys now in order to load the api keys we need a special library which is known as uh, python.env and once we install the python env we are good to go now this step uh, loads uh, the environment variables and this uh, api key um, this my api key is after the loading uh, the entropy api key so we have the api keys in my api keys now from entropic we import import entropic so uh, this is the library this is a class name and we start an instance of the class uh, and put it in the client the client uses the api key and the client is initiated here once that client is initiated what you can do is that our first message is equal to client.message.create we need to specify the models that you're working on we need to specify the max tokens so this is uh, the number of tokens in which the message will be truncated if a message has to go to 2000 words it won't go because it will cut the message at uh, 1000 tokens the message is given in this format where we have a dictionary sort of a format and we put in the role as user and content is tell me a joke then we can have role as assistant then content is something and then we have role system and content something so there are three roles uh, that we can specify here now the first message is tell me a joke and you can see that we have this joke here so that completes the first chapter and it's pretty easy i know let's let's go ahead so the next is the message format that we're working with so we uh, start up the environment here so from dot env we import the load dot env from entropic we import entropic we load the environment variables we start up the client and now it's our time so the response is client.message.create we punch in the model punch in the max token and the message in this format so what flavors are in dr paper 
and print the response. Notice that the response has so many things that you would not like to see. So if you see the structure of the message, the message is like this. So when we put in the messages, we uh, go and uh, uh, put in in the user assistant, user assistant format. Okay. And the output that you see, the response that you see is in this format. So the response is in the message within the message we have id content uh, then we have models roles stop reason stop sequence type and usage so the main text that you're interested in is this text so you need to go inside the text by going inside the message going inside the content and then going to the text so print response of content zero and text this will give you the output which is bonjour in this case now we can see that we have different identifiers so id is a unique object identifier type is the object type role is a conversational role of the generated messages uh, model the model that handles the request stop reason the reason the model stop generating there could be different reasons there could be reasons of a natural stop there could be reasons of a tool calling use then you'll see different stop reasons output um, in different cases now stop sequence you can specify sequence uh, when whenever that particular sequence a particular character is reached on uh, the generation stops i will show that in the later examples now the usage is uh, shows the input and the output tokens so that is pretty amazing list of mistakes is that you cannot start uh, with an assistant here you need to have user or system prompt here and the next is that we cannot have this we cannot have a user first and then two assistant messages that's wrong we need to have user assistant user assistant messages so that completes chapter two next we go to chapter three which is the models there are basically three models that you're talking about the first is haiku which is the fastest and the smallest sonnet which comes in between and opus which is the largest the intelligence and the costliest but the new cloud 3.5 sonnet is better than opus as well in terms of intelligence with lower cost and this is what we can use and this is what they have used for different good use cases like function calling or computer use now specifying a model is simple we just need to put the models here now we can test all the four models for example here we compare the model speeds we put in the four models here in a list and then we'll run the loop for example for model in models and uh, print out everything and you can see the speed inference in summary we see that the the highest the largest model which is the opus model takes more time for generation than the uh, smallest model haiku takes less time for generation and if you want to get a benefit of both the speed and the intelligence you can use cloth 3.5 sonnet so that's uh, the summary of that next we can go to different parameters we have already seen that there are different parameters uh, that has been used when specifying the model uh, when specifying the the response so for example the first message here is client message create we can use the model what is the model name max token what is max number of max tokens that you can allow message is, is this message now let's talk about tokens so when you say max tokens if you say uh, write me a poem and you are specifying the max token at 10 then is, this is going to truncate the code for you for example here is a poem for you the so that is that covers 10 generations or 10 tokens okay now on the other hand if uh, it's a small thing that you want to write write me a small poem but you're given the max token of 500 then it's going to generate lesser than 500 let's say and uh, we can see the stop reason as n turn so the stop reason that you will see in the response within the response is that n turn so which means that the generation is completed now for example we have tell me a joke we're giving a max token of thousand but the output token is only 55 because it doesn't need thousand the thousand is a max it can and may or may not use the thousand okay so next we go and see the speed here so we can see the execution speed for different number of tokens for different uh you know if we have more number of tokens the execution speed will be more and that is a particularly a linear sort of an output okay the stop sequence we have been talking about stop sequence and uh, the stop sequence is something which 
when encountered the generation will stop if let's say we give uh, generate a json object representing a person then it this will go on and on it will generate the json it will give an explanation of that and you can and it will also print that you can modify the things so it's very casual and it's very uh, explainative in that sense now if you specify the stop sequence as this curly bracket of close curly bracket then whenever the json object is created uh, we need uh, the starting bracket and the curly bracket so when that curly bracket is reached it will stop the generation here without printing the curly bracket and if you want the json you have to add back the curly brackets but as you can see it stops the generation here but there are some downsides as well if there is a curly bracket let's say inside john doe then there could be issues where the generation will be stopped but in a normal case there won't be any curly brackets here so in this way you can extract the json object and stop the generation whenever the curly bracket is reached okay then we look at the stop sequence now the stop sequence we have seen the response or stop reason will be specified as stop sequence so one of the things that the stop reason can be is the stop sequence the other thing is end turn the other th thing is tool calls so there are different stop reasons and by looking at the stop reason you are pretty much certain why the generation stop whether it's a natural stop whether it's some sequences reach whether there is an, some tool calling that has been invoked now we are specifying as uh, the stop sequence as b and c so whenever that character is reached b or c it is going to stop that's pretty amazing so response one stop because uh, stop sequence the stop sequence was c stop sequence was b and b temperature we know whenever we specify a temperature such as a zero it is more deterministic and there are less number of possible words that the llm is allowed to take because the probability distribution is um you know centered around a few characters few tokens if the temperature is higher then we are allowing more number of uh, tokens to be used so that makes the generation more creative so in layman terms temperature less is deterministic temperature more is creative okay so we can i think now okay we can put in a system prompt as well now we can specify the system here your helpful foreign language tutor that always respond in french so system prompt is something which acts like the guiding principle or guiding brain of that llm so this will always be added whenever it is trying to respond so this this will keep this in mind it will always keep in mind that it's a foreign language tutor so if you say hi how are you it's going to respond in french bonjour okay so we move on to streaming now now it's good to have llms uh you know giving us the reply but if it's a long reply for example write me an essay about if it's a long reply then it's no fun to wait till the entire generation is completed now we want some sort of a thing like this where whenever the token is generated it prints out as soon as it's possible this is for mainly for the user satisfaction it's cool to look at streaming data as well so we can specify a stream equal to true but then this stream object that we get is not a normal completion object it will be in the form of content block delta events and you can see that in the text format we get different text okay so we need those text to be extracted so for example cats meow loudly so this text we need to extract and and we need to specify so if you just print it we can see that it is something like this cats meow loudly but we need to print this and we need to put flush equal to true so this will give you a sentence in it in that you know in a single sentence that completes streaming now um, another amazing ability is vision abilities it's fun to work with text but vision is another dimension that you can explore now this is the entire thing so from entropic uh, we load the cn uh, we load the, the env then we start off a client this is a message this is a client taking in the message taking the model max tokens and printing out the result so tell me a joke now this is one format of using that message here where role is user content is tell me a joke now you could specify like this as well role is user content is type text text is tell me a joke we are preparing this for another thing because we are preparing this for the 
images so for the images you can see that we can specify the image as this so you can specify the image as for example we are putting in a message of role is user and content is this entire thing inside the content we are saying type is image then the source is another dictionary the source is type base 64 this is the encoding format currently base 64 is supported the media type is image.jpeg which is the name of the image and the data is a string data of that particular image we'll see uh, the equation here we'll see the formula here how it is obtained but the starting thing is this image uh, slash jpeg now we can read this image here uh, oh the png and uh, this is the function that you're talking about so we need to import uh, base 64 then we need to open the png file as an image file and once you have that image file we're going to read the contents of the image file in the bytes object then we are going to convert that bytes object into base64 encode okay base64 dot base64 encode and put in the binary data once you have the base64 base encoded data we are going to decode it into a string using the utf-8 format so once you get that string you can see this string doesn't make any sense to a human but it's definitely useful for the large language model so you can specify this string here and pass this entire thing as a message now what you can do is that you can pass this entire thing as a message you can type in a message as well what could this person have done to prevent this so once you have that you can see that we have two blocks so the image blocks and the text block here now you will be able to get a response which will use this message and use this text simultaneously to come up with an answer for example you can specify multiple images as well so there are three images so how are these images different so you can ask that question as well uh, you can for example you can for example put in like this as well so the animal image is this and where might I find this animal in the world so you can specify images combined together because we have defined this function separately another image you can specify the three uh, images here and then you can ask these questions so what are these animals so it will reply in the first second and third the first image is a bald eagle second is a bear third is a porcupine so this is how you can work with images I'm going to paste all these uh, on my github repo and you can have a look it's pretty amazing now i think this video should have cleared uh, any doubts that you have regarding using of api reference now if this is clear if this is easy for you in the next video we are going to be talking about high level concepts such as tool callings and computer use that is going to be a lot of fun so stay tuned for the next videos subscribe join my patreon and i will see you next time